Well, let's get to some of the questions uh, that we're, we're on the platform about, the uh, EU Green Deal and the IRA. And, and Governor Inslee, uh, this one is for you. Uh, Washington State has uh, enacted a variety of laws and regulations uh, over the last several years that create demand for clean energy. What do you think is the most important thing uh, for the Nordic businesses that are in the audience and on the stage uh, to know about uh, Washington State and the U.S. as they begin to look at investing in our area? Well, it won't shock you uh, to, to hear me say this, but I truly do believe it. As you look at the 50 states, they all have great virtues and values to some degree. But there is no state that, that, uh, that gives the opportunity, the, the, the economic ecosystem that makes entrepreneurship more successful in the state of Washington on almost any field, but particularly when it comes to clean energy. And the reason is we have basically built our entire policy structure around building a clean energy economy. So A, you might get some strategic reserve help when you start some of these companies. Some of the companies I talked about, I just mentioned to you, we had small strategic reserve uh, contributions from our state government to get them started during those hard days of generating capital. B, we have the strongest incentive program by creating a cost of carbon, thereby giving clean energy companies a leg up by, by imposing a cost on, on carbon. Uh, C, we are the most proactive in new policies that increase that incentive. I, I mentioned this thing about requiring heat pumps. Well, when you require heat pumps, it creates a pretty good market for making heat pumps, it turns out. And those type of forward-looking policies create whole new markets uh, in, in this regard. I would say, D, we have a citizenry which creates a great consumer base for your products as well, because they really get this. And when you're selling a clean energy product, you've got a big leg up in the state of Washington, because this is the most environmentally uh, uh, healthy uh, sort of citizenry base as far as a market. So I would say, uh, there's two reasons when you're thinking about investing or you're thinking about consulting uh, to come to Washington State. One, it is the best place to make a clean energy uh, investment. And number two, the Kraken will be the Stanley Cup winner. So <laughs> those are two reasons. I love that uh, positivity. Now, a follow-up <laughs> question here. How has the Inflation Reduction Act affected the attractiveness of Washington uh, when you're thinking about establishing a new sustainable business here? Well, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, first off, was a political miracle. I very much credit President Biden for pulling this off. $360 billion of investment. And I have a deal with the president. He has agreed to treat us fairly with the distribution of that $360 billion. And that means it's half for Washington State and half for the rest of the country. <laughs> so we think a whole bunch of that's going to come to the state of Washington. And it actually will. I would predict we will exceed our per capita allotment because we have all of these policies that work in tandem so that when we compete for a green uh, hydrogen hub, we can show that we have all these other policies together with our geographic advantages that make us really good for these investments. So I think we'll do very, very well. And uh, I could not be more excited about it. But I do want to make this point, too. The federal government action, which we're very happy about, is not enough, OK? So the federal government action might get us 60, 70 percent to our national goals. Our states have to be more aggressive than the federal government. The U.S. Congress still has not been able to produce policies that are adequate to meet our national goals. So it is necessary for states to move forward. I lead a group called the U.S. Climate Alliance of 23 states that are willing to go faster than the federal government. We represent 60 percent of the U.S. economy. And all of us, in some way or another, have more aggressive standards, more aggressive uh, incentive programs that are necessary. So the good news is big steps for the Inflation Reduction Act, bigger steps coming out of at least half of the states in the United States. And I think we're going to do very, very well. Great. Well, my next question is for Ambassador Lassen. And so as, uh, as we think about the Danish companies uh, that we've heard from uh, today, and that are world leaders in sustainability and have been for some time, uh, how will the Danish government adapt its posture in response to the IRA in the United States and the EU Green Deal in Europe? 
Well, I think you visited the great, I mean, we hear the government's optimism here, and it really seems like Washington is for the U.S. We're not, oh, getting, sorry. It, we're not getting that well, working for some reason. Uh, Maybe that's the swap into the Let's electricity see. Let's see if this works. Oh. Oh. I have a professional next to me. Oh, there you are. There we go. Working. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. Good. I had the best technical support right next to me here. So uh, um, it sounds a little bit noisy, though. But um, no, what I was saying, we, we think they believe the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act is just great. And, and uh, when I hear the, the governor's optimism, I mean, it feels a little bit like how we in Denmark felt about we always being the front leaders. This is what Washington State is over here. So we definitely see a lot of opportunities. And, and fundamentally, when, when this uh, bill was passed last August, I mean, it was surprising. It was really uh, a master uh, piece of work by the president, as you said. And we just thought it was incredible because uh, we have been complaining a little bit in Europe for the last 20 years that the US was not serious about, about enough about combating climate change. And suddenly, we have this super ambitious package coming out. So, so that's really. Uh, something very positive and that what our companies uh, see towards with a lot of, of interest. Um, there, are, there have been some concerns on the European side also about the Inflation Reduction Act, but that's more about some of the provisions within the package. Um, uh, there's a lot about uh, Buy American, uh, local content, some of these things that would make it a little bit more complicated. And some of the subsidies, frankly, over here are so large that it's hard to see why any company would just stay in Europe and do some of these industries. So we're, there's been some concern that that would basically suck out the innovation and, and, and production over there. But I think what's happening right now is that the EU, the European Union, is just also becoming more ambitious and stepping in with the, with the green, green Deal over there so to, to basically mirror a little bit what's happening here. So what we hope to see really is really just an acceleration of the investments in all of these technologies and industries and an acceleration of our green transformation across the board in Europe and America. So, so to get back to the question for our companies uh, who we believe are really uh, world leading in a lot of, uh, of these industries because we've worked for 40, 50 years in Denmark um, to further our green transformation, both because of basically inner security, energy security needs, we wanted to be not to be reliable of, of other countries, oil and gas, especially right now, but also, of course, because we thought it was the best for our climate. So they have been working for many years and are already quite strong over here in, in, in sectors you were mentioning before, Governor, for example, offshore wind. Uh, some of the leading Danish companies are, are huge over here in that sector, but also uh, when it comes to um, uh, biogas, industrial symbiosis, uh, we were talking, you were talking before about green hydrogen, uh, we believe they have a lot to offer, and a lot of them are already um, established over here. So for them, it's not such a major issue about some of these local content uh, questions. There is, there is a little bit of a question sometimes when individual states also have their local content uh, provisions, and then it becomes complicated for foreign companies, because if they have to establish in every single state, then it's a little bit of a challenge. But, but fundamentally, and we just had our Minister of Commerce and Trade over here last week with a huge group of, of Danish companies just to focus on the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, and there's so much interest and, and optimism. And what I hear from Washington State, it seems like you're going to run with half of that money there. So it's, that's going to be interesting for them. And, and I wrote that figure down. So, <laughs> well, let's let's move on to some of our commercial guests, and uh, I'll first uh, ask this question of uh, Ola Erikan, President America's Corvus Energy. Corvus already established manufacturing in Washington. Thank you for that. So, uh, with that in mind, the, the question is. Uh, what was your consideration as you decided to establish production here in Washington, and how did the state contribute to that decision? And then, once you're done with that, if there's any early learnings you'd like to share. Yeah, I don't know if mine was <laughs> Okay. Governor, so I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's working yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, so for us, uh, Washington State was a natural choice um, for many reasons. Uh, a lot of those reasons have been touched on throughout the morning, uh, the culture, the proximity to the Nordics. But Corvus was actually a Canadian startup, we have to be fair, but in Vancouver. And of course, Vancouver is also a huge maritime center and cluster. So for us, having Seattle, uh, having the proximity to, to a lot of our engineering and expertise that was based up in Vancouver, having a governor and a state that was very supportive, uh, having a host in the Port of Bellingham that 
really went out of their way to make a home for us and help us uh, get settled in, helped us out with all the regulations and things that we had to maneuver. Um, it made a lot of sense. Um, it's also the, 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 the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest is also a huge market for us. A lot of the innovations in, uh, in uh, passenger vessels, in, uh, in ports, in, um, in tugboats and offshore wind in the future, hopefully, is on the West Coast. So it made a lot of sense. Um, the West Coast also is nicely positioned to serve as other markets like Asia. So as I mentioned in my presentation this morning, we're a little bit against the current when we actually now deliver batteries to China uh, with Chinese cells, but you know we, uh, we make batteries in Bellingham for the Chinese market. So several good reasons for that. Fantastic. No, that's a great story, isn't it? Uh, let's move on, and uh, we'll ask a question next for uh, Donna, Donna Warndoff. She's with the head of public affairs with Nesta, and the question is, how do you see the IRA affecting your company's activity in the U.S. and really worldwide? And is this one on? Yeah. Yes, great. <laughs> so um, our company is in the business of fighting climate change, and we do that through making renewable liquid fuels for transportation sector. So think heavy freight, uh, freight long-haul road vehicles, uh, sustainable aviation fuel for the aviation sector, uh, marine applications, and increasingly uh, renewable polymers and chemicals. And I say this because these are sectors that don't have uh, obvious alternatives right now and for a period of time, right? It's going to take a while. So getting back to the IRA, there, I think as you said, the, the most amazing thing about the IRA is the statement it was making about the U.S. commitment and goals, right, for solving and fighting climate change. And it did that through so many things like the hydrogen credits, I think, that have been mentioned, uh, carbon sequestration, and then in our sector, uh, extending the blended tax credit and creating for the first time a sustainable aviation fuel credit. It was really innovative and it was really groundbreaking. And then in the legislative process, which we all know happens sometimes, uh, but literally in the last couple of days in this case, uh, some cost-cutting measures changed the duration of certain credits, not all of them, but certain ones. So in particular, that SAP credit and the blender's tax credit for road fuels. So now we're looking at a two-year period, and we're already five months into that two-year period. And you all understand that's not enough time to make CapEx decisions. Um, and so there's a risk, when we talk about globally and especially in U.S., there is a risk that those eligibility and values of those incentives decreases before, right, that there's uh, the ramp up and the other technologies and all this sort of thing. And it would be a real shame to miss the goals uh, that were outlined, especially the, the president's grand challenge for SAP um, because of this issue, which could still be fixed right, in, in the IRA, there's still time to fix it. And I mentioned this because what we know works, because we have a history of seeing this in the U.S., is the federal government does better, you know, what it's really good at is giving a long-term stable framework to incentivize where they want us to go. And what states are really good at is that aggressive, creative innovation that they, they're more agile, they can move faster, they can adjust their programs faster, right? That combination is so powerful, like what you've done here in Washington State, right? Between your uh, clean fuel standard, the sustainable aviation um, incentives that you just uh, signed into law, thank you, right? This is a powerful combination. And so I would just say, like, I'm, I'm hopeful, uh, but Congress does have to act to make sure that it doesn't accidentally uh, negate some of its own goals. No, that's uh, very well thought out. Now, the next uh, person I'll interview here is with uh, an interesting company, Volta Trucks. You noticed their uh, equipment out front. Now, I have to say, I have to admit, when I first got here, I thought that was the party bus for the Nordic Museum. <laughs> now, despite that disappointment that it's not, um, Don, uh, excuse me, <coughs> uh, when we think about the, uh, uh, and this is Julie Johnson, who's head of market development and growth strategy for the company. Uh, for your company, which is kind of a startup, you know, early stage company, uh, what thoughts do you have about navigating this current rapidly changing business context between the Green New Deal, the IRA, the 
state of Washington, but uh, any thought that you could share with the group? All right. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Oops. How's that? Good? Awesome. Um, yeah, so um, the exciting part about Volta Trucks is we, um, you know, we launched in 2019 and um, really are setting out to be a leader in the global clean transportation and energy movement, right? So um, with a Europe first uh, launch plan and expansion into the North American market post. So, you know, exciting for us, you know, our plan has been to come to the United States and we've, we've you know, we've launched in Europe. We're actually in production today. So um, we've certainly uh, moved through some really incredible milestones over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Now with the dawn of the um, IRA and, um, and the expansion of, uh, of incentives in general, I mean, really, if you look at it, the expansion of the, of the global incentive landscape is incredibly exciting, right? I think there's, there's you know, inspiration um, spawning everywhere. So for us, we're in a very capital in intensive industry. And, um, and it's a lot of what I think our industry has been challenged with is, is you know, can, can startups survive uh, launching as a new um, truck manufacturer? And um, I think the incentive landscape is, 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 is helping us because it's moving us into um, our U.S. plans, which we've been underway with now for well over a year. Um, but it's, it's, it's allowing us or kind of pushing us to think a little bit differently about what that strategy is today. Um, you know, we plan to launch with a contract manufacturing partner because speed is a really important element for us because, to be honest, it's great to be in a for-profit business that when you grow and the faster you can grow, the, the faster we're going to move forward on mission alignment, which is really to help curb our uh, mission problems. And um, I mean, that's, I think that's an incredible way to look at it. But, um, uh, you know, so, so the, the IRA is really saying, okay, well, we're, we've got our plans to launch. Um, and um, now we've got to think about, which Shell talked about this morning, a parallel, um, you, you know, uh, activity of great will launch as contract manufacturing, but we also need to now be, you know, thinking about and not just thinking, taking action on our greenfield plan. Um, where before we could have done this a little bit more of an a, a in-step process. Now we've got to really kind of ramp up. Where are we going to go? You know, and we've been talking, obviously, to, to states nationwide, but um, really considering now what is that going to look like for us? And obviously, um, you know, Washington is a, is a, is a great state. It's, um, I've been part of the sustainability community for many years, so um, um, I, I really know the activity that's happened here. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really important and I think it's gonna support companies like ours um, and our market cousins, which I like to call, um, you know, we're, we're, we're all family, we, we all, you know, one does well, I think we all do well. So I just think that's a tremendous platform for us all to work with. Well, I have about 30 seconds, so I'll just uh, summarize to say that we're at the beginning of a journey, I think we'd all agree. Uh, I hope we cover this subject a year from now again to see where we're at and, and just three, closing cl thoughts. Go Washington, great place to live. I live here. Go green, but lastly, go Kraken, okay? Thank you. <laughs>